This is the Mason Resolution, a steel endurance road bike that strikes a perfect balance between versatility, utility, and style, with a super smooth ride quality that begs to be ridden hard and far. Mason is based in Brighton, on the south coast of the UK, and is headed up by Dom Mason, who is approaching two decades of experience in the bike industry after a successful and long stint at Kinesis Bikes. As a brand, Mason lives by its hashtag fast far and four season design philosophies. In short, producing bikes which are designed to be ridden for long distances, efficiently, and are suitable for all seasons. Now, if you're wondering how I've managed to look quite so fashionable in this beautiful sunny day, well, it's not entirely of my own doing. I have Freewheel, our sponsors, to thank for that. And you can check out all of these delectable garments with the link in the video description. And as always, before we crack on, don't forget to like and subscribe this video, leave any thoughts in the comments, and click the bell icon. So whenever we upload a video, you will get a notification. To give some context, the Mason lineup shapes up as follows. The In Search Of is its alloy adventure drop bar bike. The Boca is its alloy gravel bike, and we featured that previously on Bike Radar with George Scott, our editor's custom build. The Definition is the brand's alloy road bike, and the Aspect is its titanium road bike. And then finally, you have the Resolution, which here is its Columbus Steel all-road endurance road bike. This particular bike is made of a mix of Columbus Life and Columbus Spirit tubing, with the whole bike welded together by Mason's contractors near Venice, with all of the bikes being put together at Mason's base in Brighton. Back in 2018, the resolution was brought bang up to date with 12mm through axles, flat mount brakes, and really cool custom dropouts which were designed by Bear Components. Out of the box, with no pedals fitted, this size 56cm test bike weighs 9.05kg on the nose. That's obviously not light in the context of road bikes as a whole, but for a steel road bike, it's actually on the lighter end of the scale. The bike is compatible with both mechanical and electronic group sets, and it also looks really nice when it's built up with a wireless group set, as has been done here with the Force ETAP AXS group set. There's really nice little ports, removable ports, which can be swapped to suit, again, electronic or mechanical drivetrains, and even when it's set up with a wireless drivetrain, it looks really, really clean. There's also other really nice details, of course, you'd like to see on a steel bike. We've got our threaded bottom bracket, standard BSA bottom bracket, 27-2 seat post, really easy to find different ones if you're not happy with that for whatever reason. And of course, we also have mud guard and rack mounts, but I'll come into those in a little while. I won't go into the nitty gritty of the geometry. I have got a full review of this bike on bikeradar.com. Again, check the link in the video description. But the overall fit of the bike strikes a really nice balance between a good, comfortable all day position, but equally it isn't too tall at the front end. It's just a good, a good place from which you can build a bike that's gonna be comfortable for the whole day. With this, the bike's handling is really calm and predictable and just very, very easy to get on with. It's no race-ready rocket ship by any means, but equally, that's not really what you want for a bike which is designed explicitly for long days in the saddle. Now, that's not to say that the bike feels sluggish. When you're riding out of the saddle, mashing your skinny little pale cyclist legs into a lactic oblivion, the bike is surprisingly unyielding for a steel bike. It's nothing like carbon, it's certainly nothing like alloy, but if I compare it to other steel bikes I've ridden, and the kind of key example would be my All City Mr. Pink, which is my long-term test bike last year. Very classic bike with skinny tubing, or, you know, standard one and an eight inch head tube. Like, that bike feels like a wet baguette in comparison to this. That isn't to say the All City is bad. The Mason is just very different. It combines a more kind of spirited ride quality with the kind of lovely buzz taming qualities you associate with a steel frame and it results in a bike which is genuinely really nice to ride. The voluminous 30mm wide Schwalbe Pro 1 TLE tyres obviously play a part here and with this bike you do have clearance for 35mm tyres without mud guards or 30mm tyres with mud guards. Now of course any 30mm tyre is going to be more than ample for all but the very, very roughest roads. And truthfully, I wouldn't be adverse to riding on terrain like this with 30mm tyres. But if a little, you know, unpaved dalliance takes your fancy, you do have a little bit of 
gravel appropriate versatility built into this frame with that tire clearance and that's always a welcome thing to see. I should mention that these tires are actually set up tubeless and Mason will do that for you for a small upcharge and I'd highly recommend you do it because who likes setting up tubeless tires? Nobody. With these, with my current lockdown weight of 70 kilos, I confidently ran about 60 PSI in both of these tires, which just improves comfort enormously. But it also gives masses more grip on rougher roads, and in particular, in wet terrain. Definitely recommended if you can get a tire wheel combo, which works beautifully. Anyway, back to the tire clearance. I actually really like that balance between, you know, wider tire clearances, but also not taking it too far. Some all-road bikes, I think, tend to try to be all things for everyone, and that results in some compromises usually. Whether that's a weird yoke around the bottom bracket or drop chain stays, it can kind of ruin the classic lines of a steel bike. And with this, sticking with the 35mm limit is more than enough for this kind of bike, and it means the bike still looks really classy, really cool. Now as stock, this particular build you see would ship with Hunt's four season V3 disc wheel set. However, our bike here has been fitted with an optional Hunt Aerowide 34 alloy disc wheel set. Now these wheels definitely deserve a little bit more coverage than I can give them here. And we do have a full story about them from a, maybe last year on bikeradar.com. And I promise I'll put a link in the video description. But in short, these alloy wheels are based off of a profile which was first seen on Hunt's carbon wheels. And they're claimed to give an aero benefit compared to a regular alloy profile. Now, obviously I can't verify those claims, but the one thing I will say about Hunt is they're very, very transparent with their testing. There's a really good white paper that went alongside these wheels. They tell exactly how they've been tested and they also give really good benchmarks comparisons against competitors' wheels. I like their approach. It deserves to be celebrated. Good for you, Hunt. Now onto the more tangible side of things. Hunt's wheels have always impressed us and I've no doubt these would be super easy to set up tubeless and likewise, they feel predictably stiff. Their 20 mm internal width also gives the tires a really nice round shape, so you're not getting that kind of light bulb shape you get with narrower rims. If I had to take one issue with these wheels, it would be with the freewheel buzz, or that should more accurately be the freewheel scream. The Sprint 7.5 hubs from Hunt are outrageously loud, to the point of almost being obnoxious. Whether or not you'll like this is definitely up to you. Personally, I found myself a little bit bashful whenever I'd have to freewheel behind pedestrians. It is very, very loud. Again, maybe you'll like that. You could probably get away without running a bell on this bike with them, so I guess that's good. If I was to nitpick anywhere else on the bike, I have to say I'm not a huge fan of the bars. This is very much my own personal preference. I just don't really like the profile of them. I prefer a little bit more reach in the drops themselves. But Mason was very, very keen to stress that if you weren't happy with any one thing on this build, they will accommodate your needs. With a short email, you could pretty much build this bike up as custom as you want. And I think that's something that really should be applauded. It saves on waste, it means the bike you're getting is the bike you want, and it's also just a much better experience for a customer overall. In all likelihood though, the stock build is probably gonna satisfy most needs. But one thing Mason does offer as standard is the option to customize stem length as well as handlebar width as well as other things on the bike. But those kind of key fit points, which so few manufacturers actually let you customize, it's a really, really good thing to see here. As I mentioned previously, the bike is replete with fixtures and fittings to fit a rear rack, as well as full cover mud guards, front and rear. The crown of the fork also features a threaded boss, which would allow you to fit a crown mounted dynamo light. This is really notable because very few carbon forks feature this, and as part of a running change, newer versions of the fork also feature internal routing for a dynamo cable. Now obviously for a long distance bike, a dynamo lighting setup makes a lot of sense. Whether that's the transcontinental race or your local 200 mile odd axe, it's a good thing to have and is well worth researching. I'm a big fan of the setups and it's amazing that you can get a bike like this that will be compatible with it out of the box. It would be reductive to assume that everybody buys a steel bike for the exact same reason. But I do think it's safe to assume that most people buy a bike like this because they want a versatile platform that will allow them to do all manner of different things. However, I feel that some brands tend to take that versatility message a little bit too far. For stooning bikes with bosses and brazons galore, which give bikes a kind of unnecessarily and unsightly pimply silhouette. 
I personally think the resolution strikes a really nice balance where it's got all the kind of mounts you'd want to see on this kind of bike without going too far and making the bike look like some kind of brass brazed flute. The resolution is available in six distinct builds and two frame set options. Builds start at £3,140 for a 105 equipped bike, rising to £6,340 for a SRAM Red ETAP AXX equipped bike. And a plain frame set is available at £1,595. Now, if you know your steel bikes, you will realise none of those are cheap. And if I was to compare it to something like the Fairlight Strail 2.0, which is a kind of a boutique steel bike of a similar ilk, that comes at £3,899 for a comparable build, which is a good chunk cheaper than this bike. That relatively higher price does hold the resolution back from a higher score overall, but it is a delightful ride. It's a really well thought out bike. I think it looks great. And you get those customization options, which Mason offers. Now, if you want to get into this particular Mason's Club, there's no dodgy handshakes or weird initiation ceremonies required. You can simply buy the bike direct from Mason. And we've got a link to them in the video description. To conclude, if you're looking for a suitably versatile road bike, which is a joy to spend long days in the saddle, is very comfortable, and I'm sure will serve you for many years to come, the resolution is very, very unlikely to disappoint, but you will have to stump up the cash. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you again to Freewheel, our sponsors, for decking me out. And as always, if you have any questions about the bike you have in the comments or any feedback in the comments, I always love reading it and I love replying. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click that little bell icon so every time we upload a video, you'll get a notification.